this is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I am pretty jazzed about week number 10 in the NFL, and that does translate to player props as well. We got Kyler Murray back in the saddle for the Arizona Cardinals. We've got some pretty fun games on tap and fun players in them and a lot of evolving situations. We're going to break down top player props for week number 10 by talking to J.J. Zacharies and getting his read on the land for this week and his favorite prop bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for a fan research joined here as i am every friday by jj zacharies and check him out on twitter at late round qb find his work at late round.com and the late round fantasy football podcast jj week 10 is already here how you doing today i'm good after week nine man i'm feeling good after week nine that's all i can say five and oh or five yeah five and oh uh five four five is probably the better way to phrase it mahomes rushing i've seen uh we had t higgins receiving yeah you had uh there was another another yardage Dal- one dalton kincaid was dalton was kincaid receiving. yardage yeah. uh and both higgins and kincaid doubled their yardage numbers yes and then you had uh touchdowns by kate otten and Chris Olave within the span of 15 seconds. The, 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 the fact that the touchdowns happen, not only early in their game, yeah. which is always nice, but and Kate happened, scored twice. Yeah. 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 Kate Otten had, had a game, uh, but they happen within 15 seconds of one another. Like I'm watching red zone. You I, I got like the quad box going every mm-hmm. week. And like one of the boxes is red zone. And uh, you know, I'm watching red zone and it literally went from Kate Otten scoring a touchdown to Chris Olave scoring yeah. a touchdown and I was fist pumping in my in my office. So I think the big question is: You went five for five for five last week. Why are you not retiring? Like, why are you still on this show? Like, you got I've I've been doing like sports betting stuff long enough to know when you have a five in a week, walk away. I know. Like, walk I walk away from the table. You're good. You're done. You're right. Like, call you're it right. a career. I, I probably shouldn't be on the show right now, but the people need their their regressed bets this week. Okay, well, you've been warned. Regression is coming. JJ yeah. is a man who understands regression better than others, so you have been warned about the regression that is imminent, but uh, hopefully we can follow up a fun week with another one here in Week 10. We're going to talk about that Kyler Murray return, talk about situations at Target, and, of course, JJ's favorite props for this week. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our preview of Sunday Night Football between the Jets and the Raiders, most thrilling match of the week, is already up here on the feed via Tom Vecchi broke down favorite pl- props for that game on the covering the spread podcast that is also going to be up on FanDuel TV plus later on today you can find this show and others on FanDuel TV plus and the fans of YouTube page full NFL week 10 preview with Ed Fang we also have our college football week 11 preview with Ed up in the feed as well all in the covering the spread podcast feed. so go subscribe if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating as well Let's begin things by talking about Kyler Murray, JJ. Back for the Cardinals. He's been practicing for quite a bit now. He practiced for the full three weeks that he was allowed to. And they announced he'd be a starter on Monday. So when I'm looking at this situation, I kind of am going to operate under the assumption Murray is healthy. I still think he'll be kind of in check because of his contract situation, where I don't think we'll see a lot of design runs because if he gets hurt, they're on the hook for a lot of money. So that's kind of my assumption going in with Murray is healthy, but not design runs what's your interest level in kyler murray props this weekend and how does murray's return impact guys like trey mcbride and marquise brown and potentially james connor yeah you know i think to the latter question we all love josh dobbs we've loved what he we loved what he did last week he's easily uh, top maybe the top person to root for in the nfl right now but i also think that we gotta realize what things were like in arizona when he was there and Arizona this season has the second lowest yards per attempt in the NFL uh, th- th- through the air. They have not been uh, very strong uh, from a from a passing perspective. And so I think naturally you're going to see an upgrade with that passing game. I'm not even saying like what we saw last week with Clayton Toon against one of the best defenses in football is uh, what I'm really comparing uh, this to. It's really th- this team with Josh Dobbs and Dobbs again has not been bad per se, especially given circumstance, but Kyler Murray is an upgrade over a player like Josh Dobbs. Uh, the other thing too, you know, you mentioned the the uh, the, the um, designed runs, which I think is very important here. And I agree with you. The one thing I'll say though, too, is that 
Murray obviously is a scrambler, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I think my opinion with this kind of thing, and obviously there's a lot of volatility to this, and it's not something that I'm going to aggressively bet or anything like that, just, just given that volatility. But the one thing I will say with a player like Kyler is I do think scrambling and running and trying to make plays is just inherent to their right. game, right? Like it's very difficult for a player who's been playing a certain way for 25 years of their life and then all of a sudden say, oh, I'm coming off this ACL. Things are going to be right. different. I, I think that they're waiting and they've waited as long as they have to make sure that he's at least able to do that. So agree with the design runs aspect. But if the line is low enough from a rushing yards perspective, I do think he's still going to have a decent number of scrambles. Yeah, the no design runs thing translates to the offensive coordinator because like he doesn't get he doesn't want to get fired and he can get fired if he calls too many design runs. Kyler's going to run if, mm -hmm. if Kyler sees the lanes like that is something you can tell the OC. You cannot tell the QB. So I agree with that wholeheartedly where if the rushing prop is low enough or like the rushing attempts number is low enough, I yeah. think that could be a spot to go at. But keep in mind that it might not be what it was before, but maybe the the, the bookmakers won't assume that it is either. Right. So because uh, they've got the same info as we do. So, yep. uh, you know, operate under that assumption as well. Which other situations are you digging into for week number 10, JD, trying to identify spots where things may be in flux? We may find some value once props are posted. Yeah, so look, Damian Pierce still has not been practicing. He has this ankle injury. Uh, Devin Singletary last week did not get that much production, but it was a, a game where Tampa Bay has been pretty good at stopping the run, as they have been the last handful of years. Not very good through the air. I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but his backfield share, Singletary's backfield share, regardless of that production, we need to look at that those peripherals and that backfield share. Pretty decent. He had a 75% snap share, 93% of the team's running back rushes, a 56% route participation, which is pretty strong at the running back position, or at least decent at the running back position. So don't sleep on Singletary. Um, you know, if, P if Pierce is out again, it's a better matchup this week. I will say I might be more inclined to go with a total yards prop for Singletary because he has been the guy running more routes. And this could be a negative game script for Houston and Cincinnati this week. Uh, but I do think the matchup is a at least a little bit better for Singletary this week. Uh, Alexander Madison, the Vikings backfield is another one to monitor cam Akers now out for the year with another Achilles injury, which is absolutely brutal. I mean, that's just, it sucks. Uh, but cam Akers being sidelined means that Madison is definitely the one. A. I mean, he was already sort of the one a in that backfield, but now he could be a bell cow because the first three weeks of the season without cam Akers in that backfield, he was seeing 85% of the team's running back rushes. He had a 12 and a half percent target share per game with cam Akers. Those numbers fell by 18% and running back rush share and 4% and target share. Now I'm a Ty Chandler Stan. I think that Ty Chandler deserves more work in that backfield, but we have to be realistic about the way that this coaching staff might use Alexander Madison. He should be in store for a decent number of touches this week. Um, yeah, we, go ahead. You're a Ty Chandler Stan. I'm an anti anti Alexander Madison Stan. Right. Uh, like right. I think he sucks. And like, that's why they brought in cam Akers. And, right. but like, it doesn't matter. Like, They've shown us like Chandler. There was a game earlier on this year where he had like three snaps and they gave him the ball in two and he looked awesome. Yeah. His, right. I don't think he played an offensive snap the next week. They don't care about that. So I say, like, yeah, yeah. I don't I think that he's going to see a spike here, unfortunately, which stinks. I like it. Exactly. I, I say it all the time. One of his top comps when he came out in my prospect model was Elijah Mitchell. He has yeah. that sort of burst and he's sort of a smaller dude, but he can, he can still, you know, we've seen it with Elijah Mitchell where, yeah, he hasn't been able to stay healthy, but that could be just what Elijah Mitchell is about. Not necessarily Ty yeah. Chandler, uh, but we've seen Mitchell be able to carry, you know, 15 touches a game and, and be okay. Um, and I, I think that we could see that out of Ty Chandler. I just don't think that that's probably probably going to happen here in week 10 with Alexander Madison back there. I, uh, I just wish we would get one Kenny and Wong would carry per game. Like, one. yeah, I mean, that just, would be nice. Another explosive guy. I mean, like, it's it's yeah. interesting that they just don't seem to really favor that or care. And that's they, Madison's it, worst trait is explosive. Exactly. Like, that's like, that's the thing he lacks most. And like, right. you got guys with juice. Like, you right. know, they, right. they know better than we do. They are at practice. They understand it. I just I want to I want to watch those guys play football. I'm not saying I know better than them. I'm just being selfish and saying I want to watch them play football. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, another situation to monitor this T Higgins injury. He has a hamstring. Sounds like he's probably not going to go this week, uh, which means Trent Irwin is probably the one who's going to benefit most. We saw this happen earlier this season with T Higgins missing a game against Arizona in week five. And in that game, Irwin had a 23 percent target share. He had 80 percent route participation. So uh, that, that, those were by far the highest of his season uh, with Higgins sidelines. So 
Trenton Irwin, another player to uh, sort of watch out for in the markets. And then the last one, you know, honestly, I still don't have that great of a feel for it because it's been kind of strange, but the Seattle backfield is one that I think is definitely sort of fluid right now where over the last two weeks, Zach Charbonnet has played 59% and 55% of Seattle's uh, snaps, offensive snaps. Uh, The problem is that two weeks ago, Kenneth Walker throughout the week was on the injury report. I think it was a calf injury that he was dealing with. And then last week you had this bonkers game script against Baltimore this week. Maybe we see a bonkers game script in the other direction and this bounce back against Washington potentially. But I just don't know if this is a situation where they're really, truly leaning on Zach Charbonnet. Now Pete Carroll has come out and said that they want to get Charbonnet more involved and that's good, but I don't think that that necessarily means he's going to play more snaps than Kenneth Walker week in and week out. So definitely something to monitor, but not necessarily something to bet. You look at the uh, the touch distribution early on in that game. It was still Kenneth Walker's backfield. And mm-hmm. I thought there might be another injury thing with Walker because he was out of practice on Wednesday, but yep. he practiced in full Thursday. So, and that was with the chest. It was not the calf thing that was ailing him before. So it's a very different situation now for Walker, both from a game script perspective and an injury perspective than what it's been the past couple of weeks. So definitely for sure, keep that in mind. Let's take a look at some yardage props for week number 10. JJ, where are you seeing value as of right now? Yeah, hopefully, unlike last week, the the, the lines didn't change that dramatically, but it didn't matter last week with both T. Higgins and Dalton Kincaid. Uh, I like Will Levis over 220 and a half passing yards in this game over on FanDuel. Uh, They get Tampa Bay. That secondary has been brutal over the last month. Uh, Over their last four games, Jim, Jared Goff, 353 yards passing. Desmond Ritter, 250, which is good for Desmond Ritter. Josh Allen, 324. CJ Stroud, 470 passing yards against this Tampa Bay secondary. Tampa Bay is really good against the run. And despite them being a three and five team right now, which would suggest that teams would have a, a, a low pass rate against them because they're not, or because they're leading in games against Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa Bay's actually faced the seventh highest pass rate in football this season uh, because teams are, are attacking that secondary they have the, the fourth worst EPA per drop back as well. So I think Will Levis, obviously he can chuck it down the field and he is doing that more aggressively than what we saw with Ryan Tannehill. Uh, he could get this, I think, I think fairly easily. I, I wouldn't be like, I'm not predicting this, but I wouldn't be shocked if he's like at this number, like early in the fourth quarter at this point, just give, given the way Tampa Bay has been playing in the secondary. And then in that exact same game, Jim, Nick Westbrook Akine has a line of 18 and a half receiving yards and I think that this is a, a, a very easy one to bet the over. Uh, I just mentioned how bad Tampa Bay secondary has been. Traylon Burks had that really scary injury last week, that concussion against Pittsburgh. It does not sound good with him going this week. Obviously, you can monitor that. I don't think he's officially been ruled out, but uh, it does not sound good for him. Uh, he's missed three games this year. And in those three games, he's been out. Westbrook Akine hit a 73% route participation on average, and he hit a 20% target share twice in those games. And that was with worst quarterback play, you know, with Ryan Tannehill. Um, so even without the, the Burks injury, though, Westbrook Akine has gotten to this number in six of eight games this season. It's not like, and one of those games was against Cleveland, who's very, very good defensively and very, very good against wide receivers. So I think that even if Burks were moderately healthy, you could consider this an over, but the fact that Burks likely isn't going to go, I feel really, and, and the, the matchup's so good, I feel pretty good about the over here. And these are correlated bets. Uh, Nick, Nick Westbrook, Akina over 18 and a half receiving yards and Will Levis over 220 and a half uh, passing yards. I tend to be a bit skittish about uh, tying things together, but these are correlated. Uh, if you want to same game par them, plus 140, uh, plus 184 over at FanDuel Sports, but you do have that route as well. Talking about Levis though, 220 and a half is an interesting number because he's just chucking it downfield. Like right. it's, I don't think it'll be efficient long term, but it doesn't have to be efficient to get over 220 and a half in a spot where they're probably going to throw the ball at a higher rate. And the passes he does complete are probably going to be like chunk gains. Right. So I think, like, from a stylistic perspective, from a play style perspective, He's conducive to overs. He conducive to, to game overs. I have the over on this game individually, personally, uh, because I think both sides are going to throw at a pretty high rate relative to their baseline for this week, given the Titans' rush defense as well. And but you, you can also lead the interceptions. But like, we don't care about a pick for a, for a passing yardage prop. So yeah. I think that Levis's play style is good for overs, both for him and for Westbrook Kahina, because like he's not the biggest athlete, but like that's that could be one completion he could get there for that low of a number, for sure. 
for sure. All right. So liking uh, Will Levis over 220 and a half and minus 114 and Nick Westbrook Aquino over 18 and a half receiving yards at minus 114 as well. Let's shift focus here and talk about some touchdown props. What you seeing there for week 10, JJ? Yeah, I'm going to start with Alexander Madison. This is a, a DraftKings bet. I think that the number is a little bit better there at plus 145. But um, Madison, like I said, should see a big workload. Uh, the Saints aren't the best matchup in the world, but it feels like this number sort of reflects a player who's who's underperformed in the touchdown column, which we, which he has. Uh, he's a big regression candidate. He scored three times this year when uh, Pro Football Focus's expected touchdowns model has him closer to seven. And so if he sees the workload that he was seeing earlier in the season, I think that this is a, a pretty strong bet, um, just, just given the number here. And then the other one that I like is Debo Samuel. He's coming back this week. He's at plus 160. I considered going with George Kittle here as well, uh, who, has, who has pretty decent odds. But uh, Jacksonville runs the second highest rate of zone in the league. And anytime you get a zone defense against San Francisco, uh, you have to, to love the, the yak players like a, like, a, like a Kittle, like a Debo. Uh, Debo this season has a 3.2 yards per route run against zone against man. And look, it's a limited sample. Of course, he's only 54 routes against man, but against man, his yards per route run is one. So it's a very, very significant difference in the way that he performs. And it's logical too. When you think about the way that Debo plays football, he need to get him open in space, allow him to, to, uh, you know, he doesn't need to beat his defender from a man standpoint. He just needs to get open in that, that area uh, and then in that space to be able to make a move and make guys miss and, and break some tackles, which is, which is what he's great at. So I like Debo at plus 160 uh, is, is the number that I got for an anytime touchdown. And then I'm going to just throw this out there. I have this written down. I didn't even have notes for it, but uh, I'm just going to go for it. Sure. Jaden Reed last week did not play the number of snaps that we saw the week prior. The week prior, he ran the most routes for Green Bay. Part of me thinks that a lot of that was game script related where, you know, they were leading and they could run the ball a little bit and take a more conservative approach. And while I do think they can still potentially take that conservative approach this year, Jaden Reed has played the majority of his snaps this season from the slot and Pittsburgh against the slot is horrific. I mean, their yards per route run allowed to the slot this year is almost double the team that's next on the list in terms of being the worst against uh, the slot and yards per route run. So his numbers long. I mean, it's a plus 350. I think I saw uh, whenever I was looking at stuff. Um, so if you want to go with like a, you know, the, the Kate Otten of the week, if you will, I'm going to say Jaden Reed and hope and cross your fingers that they just use him a little bit more than they did last week. I think he also kind of fits the Tank Dell mode, though. We talked about Tank Dell a bit in passing last week, where I like Tank Dell in these markets because they give him rushing attempts. And mm -hmm. this is when Christian Watson was still out, so this could change things. But, like, they were giving Jaden Reed creative touches near the end zone earlier on this year. And, like, you add that in with the, the slot matchup here against Pittsburgh, and you're not going to see a slot player on the field as much when they're up, like, 20-3 to 3 as they were last week. So... I think it does align pretty well for Reed, given they seem to like his speed once yeah. they're in close towards the red zone. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Reed at plus 350 as a potential outlet for this week. Do you want to go back quickly to the Debo and Ayuk one? I I always have a hard time going with the man versus zone samples because they're small sample, which you alluded to. Yeah. But when the, the anecdotal side of things aligns so well with the data, it makes a lot of sense. Like if you look at the, those two receivers, Brandon, I, and Debo Samuel, one's like a fist. They're both yard yards up to the catch guys. One's sure. like this, like yoked up physical specimen. Other one is like this crafty guy who can like make guys miss. And like the yoked up guy, I, is the one who does amazing against man. And the crafty guy, as you said, is the one who does well against zone. So that's the spot where the data aligns with the, body type i guess in yeah. the situation and so i think i'm more willing to trust it there just because it meshes so well and i feel like it's stickier when when it, it makes sense logically yeah and look you see a lot of tight ends oftentimes do better against zone as well which makes sense just right. naturally i mean like like tight ends aren't necessarily as uh nimble to to make guys miss man to man um and that's why george kittle also is you know an interesting bet at, i think plus 185 because he is he he can crush zone too. I mean this this 49ers offense I, I think personally has a chance to really really bounce back given oh, yeah. the defensive matchup this week. That that's really what this comes down to. So I'm going to get pieces of that offense and those are two of the guys who who have the best odds uh in my opinion to to find the end zone. Yeah, Trent Williams not a guarantee to be back. We did get back at practice on Thursday, which is a big boost to that offense. If he can get out there, I know it's not a lock given that his ankle's still kind of messed up it sounds like, but um I think 
that does help my confidence in them. I lay the three personally, so like I would like yeah. them to play pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I think that it does make sense. That is JJ Zacharies, and make sure you check him out on Twitter at Late Round QB. Find his work at LateRound.com and the Late Round Fantasy Football Podcast. JJ, we're not going to hold you to five and zero this week, guaranteed. You know, you're all good. Uh, good. You get a free week uh, from that perspective. But appreciate you uh, swinging by as always, and we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Jim. All righty. Find JJ on Twitter at late round QB. And again, his work late round.com touchdown bets. Again, Alexander Madison plus 145, Debo Samuel plus 160, and Jaden Reed at plus 350, with the latter two both being at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is all that we have here for today. We're going to wrap up here in just one second. But first, score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after a seat. First online real money wager only. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y in New York. As mentioned, that's all we got here for this week. If you want to find the Sunday night football preview for the Jets and the Raiders, check that out on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Primetime Tom with Tom Vecchio breaking down that game. That'll also be up on FanDuel TV Plus later on today, as will all of these shows. To get FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log into your FanDuel account or download the FanDuel TV Plus app on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku. You can watch Up and Adams there. You can watch Run It Back there, Covering the Spread, Heat Check NFL shows. You can watch Daily ISO with Tom Vecchio as well. And of course, uh, Ringer shows over on FanDuel TV Plus. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Saunas, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. I am on threads at Jim.Saunas. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across week number 10. We'll talk to you once again Monday to preview the Broncos and the Bills. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 